I want to push myself to become a better artist. I have to be honest, I feel like my growth has really stagnated these past months and I want to change that. Running this YouTube channel and working has left me little time to be able to sit down and really grow my skills. That changes today. I've always wanted to create realistic environments, so I thought I'd take you through my process in creating my very first realistic environment that I'm actually proud of. Just so you know, this isn't a tutorial as I usually do, but if you are still interested in breaking down this shot, I have a link where you can download the entire blend file down below. Now before we jump into Blender, I just want to thank the kind folks over at Huey on. They sent me their Canvas 22 Plus display tablet plus a monitor arm and said to create anything I like. Now I've been using display tablets in my workflow for a while now and it's been a game changer for visual effects. There are countless ways a display tablet can speed up your workflow and that's why most industry professionals I know swear by them. In today's video, I'll be showing you some of the amazing capabilities the tablet offers and why it's my favorite display tablet yet. Of course, if you are interested in display tablets or are even in the market for a secondhand display for your setup, I highly recommend you guys head over to Huion, link down below. They currently have a Christmas sale going on, so make sure to hurry and get those nice savings. Now let's get into the video. So first, I used a Bob Ross painting as inspiration for the shot. I wanted to first find the right focal length for the camera, so I took the image into f -Spy in order to align the scene. This made it super easy to start laying out the foundation of the scene inside of Blender. I started by adding some planes in Blender, then using the annotation tool set to surface, I was able to trace the outline of the water and mountains onto the actual geometry of the objects. That way I could see the correct perspective and where the water met the land. Next, it was adding the mountains in the back. Now the mountains were the trickiest thing to nail down and as you'll see, I'll end up changing these throughout the project. I used the ant landscape add-on that comes default with Blender and play around with the mountain one preset until I got a result that I liked. In order to save data, I created instances instead of duplications, which means that all the mountains are the exact same However, I can just rotate them and scale them differently to make them look unique. Now it was time for the river. I tried projecting the painting onto the floor using the project from view UV method, and that seemed to work okay. Now here's where the fun part comes in. Since I was using the Canvas 22 Plus display tablet, I was really able to sculpt out the surrounding land to make it as accurate as possible. I've never really sculpted before inside a blender, however it was super easy and fun to do. The nice thing is that the harder I press the pin, the more the ground raced up so I could get really precise in my modeling. Having two separate windows also helped me see how the geometry looked through the camera and make adjustments as needed. Once I was happy with the basic look of the ground, it was onto the lighting. At first I used a simple HDR image from Polyhaven that roughly looked like the painting. This was good for now but I'll end up changing it later. Now for the failure that was me trying to texture the mountain myself. I tried using many different musgrave textures and noise textures to combine them to make the patches of snow but I never really got a result that looked good. This might come to a surprise to some but I actually turned over to other tutorials. Never be afraid to admit defeat and learn from somebody else because you'll see the final mountains looks 10 times better than any result I got here. Next up was the texturing of the ground plane I modeled earlier. I knew most of the ground was going to be covered in plants so I downloaded a simple forest ground texture. I noticed some spots of white snow in the reference so using my tablet I went into vertex paint to paint the splotches of snow. In retrospect, this wasn't the best method since vertex painting actually requires geometry data, so I had to subdivide the area and add more geometry. In the end, I think it worked out, and after combining it with some musgrave textures, you can't tell the blocky texture. Here's something interesting I found. There's actually a ambient occlusion node for texturing. I tried using this to make the mountain more interesting in the crevices. However, I ended up not using it because it was too low resolution for my needs. Definitely going to have to play around with this a little bit more since it's so powerful. Now I used an amazing plant asset library for this, so I'll have it linked below if you are interested. I recently found out you can make asset libraries in Blender so you can just drag and drop into your seat. It's much easier than having to individually append each object inside of Blender like I was doing in the past. Now for foliage, I like working with the bigger objects first, so in my case those were the pine trees. After that, I can start getting smaller and smaller until it feels real. Now for the smaller grass objects, I brought in five separate assets together into their own collection. That way I can make a particle system that will randomly spread them out. You could totally use geometry nodes here, but I wasn't too comfortable with them and I'll definitely need to do some more testing. I like going in a weight paint to make sure there are a few spots with no foliage so that it gives a more realistic pattern. Having a display tablet here was a godsend as getting smooth strokes with a mouch is much harder to do. Over the years, I've started adding many different particle systems for foliage in different areas. I just find that if you can isolate different areas in the image, you can have greater control over the look. Also, it means that you can play around with the different seeds for the particle systems and not have to change around the entire image. I ended up having four separate particle systems for the foliage. One for the left side, one for the right side, one for the background, and then finally a little small particle system for just a singular grass object on the side of the scene. Also, at the end, I use another particle system to add some more trees in the tree line. 
I usually struggle a lot with water and reflective surfaces. I was a little bit worried at first, but I actually use that ambient occlusion node I talked about earlier to mask out the sections near the edge of the water. That way I could realistically add some foam and ripples to the edges. What ended up really selling the water was increasing the transmission and changing the color ever so slightly to absorb green light. In the home stretch now, I tried once again to change the mountains with no such luck, so gave up for the moment to come back to it later. I broke up the render into three separate passes, one for the foreground and then two for the mountains in the background. Using a file output node inside of Blender, I was able to render out all of my passes at the same time and save them as PNG files. Now we're finally done with Blender and we can go into compositing everything together. I took everything into my compositing program of choice, Nuke, and I combined all the different layers. Now that they were separated, I could really play around with them to get a realistic result. I added mist on each of the layers progressively to get more noticeable the further back it was from the camera. Then I made sure to lighten up the mountain layers in the background since the atmosphere would make it a little bit more foggy than the foreground objects. Some of the final touches I added were a lens flare, some film grain, and chromatic aberration. I just like doing this to kind of make it feel like an actual camera. And then I render out the final composite. Of course, I did end up going back to change the mountains, so I'll link the tutorial I followed to get a result I got. And then I took the final shot into DaVinci Resolve to add a final color grade. Now, I'm not a great colorist, so I won't really go into my color process. Anyways, after all of that, I was left with this final shot. again to Huyan for making this video possible. Without the Canvas 22 Plus, this shot would have been much more difficult to achieve, so once again, if you are interested in the tablet I use, I'll have a link to it down below in the description. Hopefully this video has been informative and gives you the motivation to create your own amazing work. If you made it this far in the video, it would mean a lot to me if you consider liking and subscribing in order to help out the channel. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.